Let me get rid of this. Hello and welcome to another Solana tutorial. Today we're gonna talk about durable transaction nonsense. I guess we're gonna start that again because I did not talk into the mic. Durable transaction nonsense again. Yes, we have talked about this before. And in fact, I do recommend that if you haven't seen that first video about offline signing and stuff, that you go check that out there. Offline transactions using durable nonsense. That's the basics. The underlying uh, knowledge that you need is in there. Go check that out first. And then come back to today's video where we talk about durable nonsense again, a bit more in detail because I do have some questions that I wanna get answered. For instance, who the f can update durable nonsense? Specifically, can anybody update any nonce or only the guy who initialized the nonce and if that's the case then I imagine that guy needs to sign so can I create a nonce for someone else and can they not use it without me signing then? So there are just a bunch of open questions that I have. I mean, the term durable nonce has been thrown around a lot. Blah, blah, it's underused, whatever. It would make stuff faster. And I'm like, well, would it? What, what would be faster? So yeah, just wanna go a little deeper into durable nonces. We'll see how, how long this video will be and how, how deep my rabbit holes that I'm gonna dig are gonna be. Maybe it's just a short one and maybe it will take me four hours, but uh, we'll see. I'm ready to be here in this heat to bring you knowledge. So that's what we're gonna do today. Yes, let's play with durable nonces. So last ta -ta -ta time, uh, let me get down. Get down to it, get down to it. It's so fun how my brain just Whenever I say something that I know from a song, immediately my brain is like, oh, music, let's sing. Get down to the pop, pop, get down on a pom pom. Yeah, I should be a musician, not a developer. Or maybe both. Whatever. Last time we were working with durable nonsense. Uh, nonsense. <laughs> so we created a nonce account. No, no, we used a nonce account. Oh, 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 it's a, that's another question. And I'm not sure if I'll be able to answer that. Because I had a conversation recently with someone who said that the nonce stores a recent block hash. But in the last video, we realized that no, it's not a recent block hash, or at least I couldn't find it. So if I could find out what the system program actually stores as a nonce, that could also be interesting to know. Because I don't think it's a recent block hash. There. That's just in the implemented proposals. There. Yeah, that's what I mean. The cluster's most recent block hash is stored along with the specified nonce authority. So da -da -da -da, the most recent block hash, the cluster's most recent block hash is stored. And I don't think that that's actually the case. I doubt that that's the case. It feels to me more like a random number. And it would be amazing if I could find the implementation from the system program, but no promises. More important are my first two questions because whether or not that was an actual block hash, it doesn't have many implications. It just has the implication that in the beginning it could still be used as a normal transaction with the recent block hash and from then on that one would be usable as a durable nonce. That's all. So like from a security perspective, now talking about it, I would not recommend to use an actual recent block hash for the durable nonce. Because if the transaction is signed with an actual, nah, it would still have to have the advance as the first instruction. But hey, if you sneak that in somehow, then uh, you could also keep the transaction alive longer. Anyway, so that's just a side question. If I manage to answer that, that would be cool, and if not, that's fine as well. I just have so many open questions still and, and wanna just I just wanna understand it better because it seems like such an yeah important thing actually. Well not no, maybe not important. Important maybe the wrong the wrong word because you can, you know, go about, you know, doing all the things on Solana without touching the nonsense ever. But it's such a low level and impactful, maybe that's the word that I'm looking for, such an impactful thing because it allows you to do so many things and it also has security implications, right? If you don't know about that, 
there are attacks that you can do with durable nonsense. So I want to learn as much about it such that I can make informed decisions and that I can teach you properly. So yeah, that's what we're doing today. Learning about durable nonsense. And I, of course, make a video because otherwise I can't motivate myself to study. I mean, pff, what am I, a student? Hell no. But yeah, as long as I'm making a video, then it feels like, yeah, I'm being productive while I do something. The advanced nonce account instruction is used to manage the account stored nonce value. And here we have it again. It stores the cluster's most recent block hash in the account's state data, failing if that matches the value already stored there. This check prevents replaying transactions within the same block. I mean, kind of makes sense. Due to the nonsense account rent exempt requirement, which all of the accounts have by now, a custom withdrawal instruction is used to move funds out of the accounts. The withdraw nonce account instruction and enforces the rent exemption by preventing the account's balance from falling below the rent exempt minimum. Well, but by now I think the runtime even makes sure of that, since all of the accounts on Solana need to be rent exempt. An exception to this check is if the final balance would be zero nambles. Yes, because then the account is just deleted. An account closure detail has an additional requirement that the stored nonce value must not match the cluster's most recent block hash as per advanced nonce account. Probably also a security thing thingy thingy. The account's nonce authority can be changed using authorized nonce. Takes one parameter, the new authority, yeah, yeah. That still doesn't tell me who is allowed to advance the nonce, if that's just anyone. Because like what I'm thinking of is there could be an attacker just randomly advancing all nonces every few seconds just to mess with people, right? Just to, to make durable nonces essentially unusable if you don't need the signer. So I do think that you need to have the authority to be able to advance it. But then that would be really bad for like people who sign something accidentally or not that they don't want to be executed anymore, right? I, I signed the transaction because I wanted it to be executed, but then I found out, no, actually now I, I want to revert that or not allow that anymore. Can I then somehow invalidate that nonce? That's my question here. So yeah, I wanna have a closer look at that and not just read the documentation, especially because that's just an implemented proposal and it could have just changed, but actually go through the source code and test it myself. That's a good strategy, I, I guess. But I mean, here it says it anyway, advance, withdraw and authorize all require the current nonce authority to sign. Okay, so if the nonce authority doesn't sign for the advance, then you can't advance, which kind of makes sense because otherwise everybody could advance. All right, here in the last paragraph, maybe also some important information. When a transaction fails, then no state is persisted except the fee payer is debited the transaction fee. And now with the durable nonce, a validator could just be like, oh, it failed, I take the transaction fee. Oh, it failed, I take the transaction fee again. Oh, it failed, take the transaction fee again. So to prevent that, because again, he could just keep replaying that and it keeps failing and, and the block hash, so the nonce never changes. So to prevent that, even if an instruction fails, the nonce is advanced. The nonce account is rolled back to its pre-execution state as usual and then the runtime advances the nonce. The advanced nonce account is stored as if successful. So not only is the transaction fee being claimed but also the nonce is advanced. So if you execute the transaction once and it fails then the nonce account is advanced to prevent those replays. Which is also good like in general, if somebody like caches your signature with that nonce that they can't just keep replaying that because as soon as they do it once, then obviously the nonce is advanced and it's over. From now on you need a new nonce and for that you need a new signature. Because the nonce is at the same field as the recent block hash and that is part of the transaction message, which we know all the, the signatures sign the message. So if something changes there, changes the signature. Bam. Okay, cool. I think that's uh, good enough for like uh, getting up to speed and repeating stuff. And what is this? Developer's guide to durable nonces. This guide is meant to be a one-stop shop for Solana's durable nonces. And it's on the official Solana.com developers. I mean, we can have a look at that. Why not? Can I go here though? 
And it's so weird for me to be mirrored, but at least then you see more of the text. So I guess you can go through that by yourself. Maybe just a high level overview what durable nonsense could be used for. Scheduled transactions. That's what we said with the offline transactions, right? We prepare the transaction and then we send it from a different device or just later in time, something like that. So we can pre-sign a transaction and then submit it later. Multisig wallets also use durable nonsense because several parties need to sign and that, you know, might not all be within those two minutes of one recent block hash. Programs requiring future interaction. If a program on Solana requires interaction at the future point, a transaction can be pre-signed with a durable nonce. This ensures that the contract interaction happens at the correct time without necessitating the presence of the transaction creator. Um, okay, don't fully get that. I mean, you could also implement that just with a crank that everybody can just execute and you just don't need the signer. But yeah, I guess, whatever. Then cross-chain interactions. When you need to interact with other blockchains, it requires waiting for confirmations. Well, yeah, other chains are just slower <laughs> or faster, I don't know. You could sign the transaction with the durable nonce and then execute it once the required confirmations are received. And that sounds like once I sign a transaction, I can essentially treat it as if the transaction went through, which it didn't, it wasn't even submitted yet. But if I have the signature or signatures, and I know that the state is not like influenced, it's something that doesn't, you know, depend on the state. I don't know, right? It wouldn't fail at the later point because I don't know, the guy removed all his soul or whatever it is, right? If it's just an interaction with a program and I'm sure that the fee payer will still have funds and the program also doesn't depend on any state, so it would fail. Then I could treat it as if the transaction went through at the point where I received the signature. And I think that is what Mert meant in a discussion we had about durable nonsense, where we compared Solana pay to like credit card payments. And then he was like, well, really with durable nonsense, that would be quicker. Like if you compare it, then with durable nonsense, you could compare it from the time where you basically have the signature. I think that's what he meant. But anyway, so once we have the signature, it sounds like even the guy who signed can't revert it anymore. If the signature is present and somebody else has it and they have the authority over the nonce, then they can execute that at some later time in any case, even if I try to, I don't know, stop them from it. So I can treat the signed transaction with a nonce as if the transaction has already been confirmed, even though it has not even been submitted. Because that's what, you know, credit cards do. They tell you, yeah, the payment went through, even though the settlement is like much later in the process, maybe two days or something. Yeah. Anyway, fifth example, centralized derivatives platforms. Aha. Uh -huh. Can be pre-signed and when the triggers met, the transactions submitted. Okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It's a big guide though. I don't think I want to go through the entire thing. But cool that we have such guides. I didn't even know that. I just Googled it and welcome to solana.com slash developers. Seem to be quite some nice guides here. Yeah, pretty cool. Anyway, so that goes through the basics, block hashes, which are 32 byte alphanumerics. Alphanumerics? Really? Really? No, I disagree. I like to disagree with official documentation. I mean, we can talk about encodings now, but alphanumeric seems wrong. It's a 32 byte number. It's just some 32 bytes. It's just encoded usually in base 58 or whatever, which makes it alphanumeric, even ignoring the zero and, and three more letters. 24 times two is 48. Plus 10 is 58. How many characters are in the alphabet? Is this already the first rabbit hole? 26. Oh, I'm stupid. Okay, so 26 times 2 is 52. So it's 62 with digits 0 to 9. So we remove four characters, which is the 0 and 3 letters. Yes, that's what I said. L O N. Oh, I, I forgot the I, the capital I. Yeah, 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 okay, got it. 
Anyway, <laughs> already digging down. I, I just disagree with this. I don't think block hashes or durable nonsense for that matter are 32 byte alphanumerics. They are long, alphanumeric, they are longer. Let me demonstrate. Um, I don't like being freaking mirrored. Guide me back to my side. I'll show you, I'll show you. Just check any slot. We're currently at this one. And then check any block hash. I'm gonna use a random online tool to count characters. This, my dear friend, count characters, has 44 characters. So that's 44 alphanumeric characters. But if you convert it down from base 58, then it's gonna be 32 bytes. Might have 44, might have 45, or maybe even 43, I don't know. Let's check out any other random one. Recent block hash also has 44. So I guess it's 44 or potentially 43 if the first one is a different one. Where can I see just a bunch of block hashes? Recent block hashes. That's why we see a lot of block hashes. So they are all the same length unless there. There we have one that is shorter. That's 43 characters. Yes. <laughs> we have up to 44 alphanumeric characters which represent 32 bytes. It's the same with like public keys. They're also 32 bytes, but the alphanumeric base 58 representation is 44 bytes because each letter is encoded in one byte. So yes, uh, whoever wrote this, this, I disagree with you. I disagree with, I can't even point that far, but disagree with this. This, 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 well, I dis disagree with. Sorry. Anyway, weren't we talking about durable nonsense? <laughs> so, okay, let, I need to read the sentence again because I already forgot what the beginning was. Durable nonsense, which are 30 byte numbers, 30 byte things. I don't have a better word, but like, which are 30 bytes in length are used in place of recent block hashes to make every transaction unique to avoid double spending while removing the mortality on the unexecuted transaction. So removing the mortality means I can still submit it at any later point. It will still be valid. It's not dead. How do you make transactions unique and avoid double spending? Uh, I mean, yes, we know how it works. The nonce account stores the value of the nonce. This account is owned by the system program and is rent free. What? I, yeah, rent exempt. Rent free also means something different for me. It's like you don't have to pay rent, but you do. Around 0 0.0015 sol. The nonce authority is the account that controls the nonce account, but we can transfer the authority to another. Aha, uh -huh. but that means I could create, I mean, that's, that's obvious, but now I just, I wanna just reiterate. That means you can just create a nonce account for someone else and then just they need to sign to advance the nonce. That would work. Now that we know what durable nonces are, it's time to use them and send durable transactions. Oh, that's where that comes from. It's the durable transaction, not the durable nonce. Well, it's a durable nonce as well. Whatever, whatever. Both are durable. All so durable. Oh, we could, we can, can even do that stuff with Solana CLI. Should we do that? The nonce authority needs to sign the transaction with nonce advanced instruction. So there it is again. Authority needs to sign. I mean, I guess, why not go through that example with the CLI? Let's do it. Let's check which version I have because I probably downgraded that, but I guess it's fine. Yeah, those, those should not have changed. Okay, so new key pair authority and then one for the nonce and we go definite let's see if i can solana airdrop let's still go definite i i have some probably just stealing something from last time's account cool so we have 0 0.2 that should be enough for playing around with nonsense let's create ourselves a nonce account create nonce account let's get some help on that we need to provide the key pair. The amount apparently accepts keyword all. I don't know what all does, but I'm gonna try. The key pair is the 
nonce, and then I just say all, right, all right. So what do we see here? We created, ah, all, damn it, that's all. Okay, so literally all, it gives them literally all, well, at least I know what the keyword does now. Uh, but <laughs> I transferred all my soul onto this account. Oh, that's stupid. Okay, okay. I, okay, I learned something. Great. Obviously, the smarter idea would have been to put in the minimum. I want to see how many bytes you need. Their nonce account length. That's just a type. It doesn't give me a proper number because it's calculating that number from all of this stuff. Which is a U32, a U32. So four plus four plus 32 plus 32. Ugh. Okay, you know what? <laughs> I'm making this way too difficult. 80. So in the current configuration, it's 80 bytes. Solana rent for 80 byte accounts would be something 0015. There you go. So that would be the minimum amount of salt that I need to put on that account. That is what I should have put instead of all. So let's do the withdraw. Withdraw from nonce account. Let's see what that needs. Nonce account address. And the recipient address. And how much. I could withdraw all of it. Then recipient address is my address. And then how much? Well, I'm just gonna take all of it. All of it. Should bring it down to zero. Cool. Which means that this account, if I refresh that now, should be deleted. Account does not exist, zero bytes. But it did exist, there were transactions on it. Doesn't mean that it ever existed, but it did. We know that. Because you can just add the account and never do anything with it. Then you also see transactions here. And then we do the same thing again, but with the right number. This thing, so same account, we can initialize the same account. Instead of all, we're going to do, what did we say? One point rent for 80. This with this number. That should be the minimum. Let, let's just create a new key pair. Could have done that earlier, but I wanted to test what happens if I do the same. Even just with one byte fewer, yeah. Need at least that many Lamperts to be rent exempt. So there we just get a bad parameter. So the number we used was really the smallest one we can possibly use. Good. We have a nonce account now, again, initialized. So if we refresh that one more time, we should see another nonce account where we are the authority again, and it should have another block hash. We can now fetch it with Solana nonce. Solana nonce and our nonce account gives us the nonce that is stored there, okay. The 32-bit alphanumeric string. It's not a 32-byte alphanumeric string. Especially not a 32-bit alphanumeric string. At least be consistent, now you say bit. At least here you said byte. 32 bits, come on. That's four bytes, yo. That's not safe. I can iterate over 32 bits. Where was I? Here. That, please change that, damn. First of all, if you could count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 30, 1, 2, that's 32, by the way, 1, 2, 3, 4, we have 44 characters again. So, I'd, I mean, it looks like 32, you'll be like, yeah, my thumb, yeah, it's 32. It's in the order of magnitude of 32, yes, but it's 44 characters. Did you ever count? Yes. Okay, sorry. Wrong assumptions. You are right with 32 bytes. It is 32 bytes, but not bits and not alphanumeric string. And yes, it will be used to replace the block hashes while signing a transaction. Great. We can inspect the details of the nonce account in a prettier format. Nonce account, but it gives me all of the info not just this, but also the rest of the info, the balance, minimum balance required is conveniently the same because <laughs> we already calculated that and the fee. So apparently for some reason, it's important that that is persisted in there. So that's interesting, I guess, because you can have, this is all just my assumptions now, but since the fee schedule can change, right? 
Solana could be like, hey, we now charge 10k Lamperts per signature, or whatever, right? Then a transaction that we would expect to succeed now, because we just have enough for the transaction fee on that account, for instance, it might not succeed in the future anymore if the fee schedule changes. So I think what's happening here is at the point of the creation of the nonce, it also fixes the fee schedule for this transaction. So for this transaction, it will always just charge those 5k Lamperts per signature to guarantee that the transaction can go through even in the future if the fees might be different. So that's my assumption why we have to store that here in the nonce account. I'm not actually sure about that, haven't read anything about it, but that would be just, you know, my, my assumption. And that again assures the quality that once we have the signature with this nonce account, that we can treat it as if the transaction has been confirmed, even though it wasn't even submitted, but it can be submitted at any point. Pretty cool stuff. Oh yeah, and the authority, we're the authority. Cool, working well so far, but we haven't really learned much. We can advance the nonce with new nonce. Okay, let's go new nonce on this account. And all that does is a nonce advance. We can look at it one more time and now it's, it will be different to EH and not HEV anymore. All that did da, 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 here was a system program advance nonce instruction. Cool. It does take the SysVar recent block hashes though. So actually, maybe it does actually take some recent block hashes. So let's do it one more time, a bit quicker. New nonce, refresh. Our nonce is BMD. I don't find a BMD anywhere in the recent block hashes. Let's just say the system program does some magic with some recent block hashes and creates a new recent block hash, probably based on some recent block hashes, but with more magic and not one-to-one. -one. Okay, so far we've just created a nonce account. We haven't actually used it. So let's see how we can do that with a CLI. To sign offline transaction, we need to sign only, use a specific block hash where we put in the nonce. And then we can add signers like this with signer, public key, equals and then his signature here he provides the nonce account why do oh yeah obviously i need to do that because i need to add the advanced nonce instruction okay so let's do that let's do an cli instruction with a durable nonce so first thing we need is the nonce then a recipient or something zero one we're cheap Wait first, the recipient. I always get that wrong. We send to Bob 0 0.01. Ah, oh, you can't do that. I have to write it all in one line. Fine. So, nonce account, we take this again, block hash, this thing, and then we say sign only. So, we just create the signature. We don't actually send it to an RPC. Cool. That looks good. We've got this guy as a signer and this as his signature. Perfect. If I check the signature now, obviously it won't be there yet. Not found. But I can now even sometime later, way later to when I signed, can submit this transaction. For that, I need to remember what the actual transaction was. The signature obviously alone is not sufficient. I also need to have the message part of the transaction, but I can just create the same mes message part by doing the same thing. And how do I make sure that you don't think I'm still signing? Say Solana config set keeper to null. <laughs> so if I now try to do anything, it says I don't. you don't have the signer, right? I don't have any active signer now. Still, I can do the same thing and submit this transaction. So we do the same thing. We provide the same block hash because again, that's part of the message part of the transaction that we need to have remembered somewhere. Oh, we look it up again in our nonce account, but yeah, we do the same thing, but now I can't sign this, right? It, it's still missing a signer. But what I can do is I provide signer and 
just copy this into here. Now the CLI is just messing with me. I don't need a default signer. Oh, probably because he's missing the fee payer. What if I set the fee payer? Because I don't want to like sign as this. I already, I already signed. It still says no default signer found. And I think that's just the Solana CLI doing that check before it actually checks if I, because I should not need one. That's my point, damn it. Fine, I provide the key pair from, from the fail. It doesn't matter, invalid block hash. Oh, this is more difficult than I thought. BMD, so that didn't change. It's very unreadable as well. Okay. Norms authority is also this guy. Aha, now it suddenly works. Okay, I just forgot the nonce authority. Fine, and now the signature, this is the same as the signature we've actually provided here in the signers, the XMN. I know it's very hard to read because that's all uh, just a blob of text, but yeah, that's the signature. And now if we go there and search for it, with that recent block hash, we actually sent the 0 0.01 soul to Bob from that key pair, even though we didn't have the key pair anymore. And the other one that I provided, this key pair, the false, this one was ignored. If I check the nonce now, this now need to be different than the BD, so it's now the 6MI because it was advanced. So that's the, the case for a successful transaction. I can also do an unsuccessful transaction. And I once again transfer to Bob and sign with this nonce account and this block hash. But this time we're gonna send 10 sol that we don't have. Right, but now it would be good to provide the actual keeper of the authority. So cool, we use this block hash and that would then be our signature, the 5iz. And then we can submit it same way as before. I don't think I need that key pair, but we will see. Signer we change to this part. Provide the block hash, the signature for that guy who is our fee payer and the sender and also the authority. Let's see if we need the key pair still. Pre-signer error. That's also an interesting error. Is that just because I don't have a key pair? Oh, haha. -ha. That's, ah, nice, 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 nice. That's because that signature that I provided here, this one, is not actually a valid signature for this guy for this message part. Why? Well, because the real signature was with Tensol. So obviously we need to change that to Tensol as well. I just forgot that. There we go, okay. Now the CLI tells me I can't do that because of insufficient funds. And that's just the CLI being nice once again. Damn it, stupid CLI stops me from doing stupid stuff. Can I tell you to ignore checks? Oh, I could have dumped transaction message. <laughs> no way for me to not have those checks, I guess. Guess we gotta go away from the CLI and work with JavaScript, because we're way more open then. We can just not do any checks. By the way, fun fact, if we would sign the same thing again here, then we would obviously get the same signature and a dump, what was it called? Dump transaction message. Then this is the message that is being signed and this is the signature. Well, this is the signature. Again, same thing as above because the message didn't change. We still have the same block hash, the same nonce account, same everything. And I signed again, so it's the same signature. So is there a way for me with the CLI to just send raw transaction? I mean, that would be a nice feature for the Solana CLI to have actually, I have the message and I have the signers. Can I just pump that out, please? But apparently our great CLI is too stupid for that. So our own script it is. Connection, send raw transaction from a buffer. Great. Base 64 message. I can just take the message and say this is base 64 encoded signer. Same thing as above. And then you take the signature buffer here. And then send raw transaction just serializes this again. So that's just to get the signature with a signer in there correctly because I don't know 
how that looks in the buffer actually if they're just after each other. Actually, we could look at that. And then we might as well submit it. Cool, let's try this. Because this will let us just submit it even though we don't have enough sol. Versioned messages must be deserialized with versioned message deserialized. Okay, so I can't do transaction from because here you already expect the entire transaction with the signatures. Here, transaction.populate with message from. Essentially, that's what we will, that's what we want to do. And then the byte array is sliced with signature length in bytes. So apparently the signatures come first and then comes the message part. Yeah, we're learning something completely different now, but that's fine. Ooh, yeah, yeah, that's nice to read. I could look into that and at the same time, I don't really want to right now. Essentially, it's try it's finding out how many signatures there are and the signatures are in the front. So essentially, I want to do this message from and then transaction populate. So what we need to do here is from and no signatures yet. And then we add the signature and then we can serialize it and, and look at it. Okay, you know what? Let's just see if we can build the transaction as a first step assertion failed. We are failing here, my dear friend. This should be a 64 byte buffer. It's not a 64 byte alphanumerical string. No, it's longer, but it could be that my signature is a bit smaller. Let's actually check length. If that is like 63 or something, because that, that can happen. If the signature is just the first byte, 66. Oh, I have too many. That's interesting. Is that base 58 and not base 64? The signature could actually be base 58 again. Yeah, 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 yeah. okay, okay, okay. Ah, we're learning so many things again. So that's not a base 64, that's a base 58 signature. So we need to somehow treat that differently. How do we get base 58? It doesn't allow base 58 here. That's a bit more complicated. It will get me bytes so I can say buffer from and then the bytes. Yes. So let's see one more time. 64. Oh, that's more convenient. That is good. I like that. And then I still get a signature verification fail. Let's lock the transaction. That transaction that we have deserialized does have a signature though. Does have the signature for this pub key. It has the fee payer and the instructions at the system program number four, that's the advanced nonce. Then a transaction instruction again at the system program, that's zero two, that's probably the transfer. So advance and transfer, transfer with that many Lamperts. Recent block hash is the 6MI and the accounts, it has my account, the nonce account, the recipient, the system program and the recent block hashes. So that all looks fine. The question remains, why can I not serialize it now? I can serialize it, I just tell it again to ignore that. Let's at least say that they need to be present, but let's not verify them. There we go. Okay, so they just don't verify, so we have once without signature and once with signature. And we see, as I said from reading the source code, that the signature is in the very beginning of the serialized transaction, or the signatures are in the very beginning. I just have one in this case. And then the rest of the message part is back here. I don't know where the problem here is. I wanna lock something else. I just lock the signature, because that should give me this. And if it's not this, then it's not the right signature. A buffer, the opposite of decode, encode. But hey, the encoded TX signature is the 5IZ. That's weird that it doesn't, it's the same signature. It's, so it's serialized and deserialized correctly. What would happen if I just send it? Send it. I mean, now it would fail because it would again tell me that the serialized doesn't work because the signatures don't check out. But what if I say, hey, pff, I don't really care. Let the validator do that job of verifying my signature. And then probably from the RPC, I get back that. So now it's a sent transaction error, transaction signature verification fail. So the send once again checks my signatures. 
skipping pre-flight checks actually then just submits it. But probably the validator will then still be like, uh, uh this is not a valid signature. And so it will just reject it. That's annoying. What am I doing wrong, students? Tell me. Teachers, teach me. Let's do another thought experiment. And by thought experiment, I mean practical coding experiment. Instead of adding the signature from the buffer, what if I would actually just sign it? So that seems to be going through. The actual signature would be this though. So that makes me think that the message part of that transaction is different to what I signed for previously. Okay, getting there. Because that's now a 2MG as my signature. So obviously if we have a different message part, then the signature won't be the same. Can I just build it manually? Can I just manually build my transaction from what I would expect? Because that's, you know, that's also what I should be able to do. Instructions. First is a nonce advance and then Instruction two is a system program transfer to Bob 10 billion. And then we add those two instructions and then we sign it. Let's see what signature would come out there if we did that. Recent block hash required, of course. Yes, yes, my bad. Of course you need the fee payer, which is the signer and you need the recent block hash, a string. Oh, how convenient. Perfect. Let's just put in the string like that. Of course, fee payer and block hash are also part of the transaction message. And okay, here's the thing. The signature is once again 2MG. So as well as from the deserialized transaction, as with my custom built transaction, I get the same signature, this stuff, should be equal to just this stuff. But that still doesn't explain why the signature is then invalid. I wonder if the CLI has any other checks. I guess I just accept that something, something I did wrong. If I put in the 2MG here as my signature and then I don't sign it, but just add the signature, as decoded, that should then also work because then it should be a correct signature. Yeah, it looks good. It's not failing anymore, even as even though I say verify signatures true. I mean, there is like something, something, something. I didn't figure it out why the CLI gave me that signature or maybe I just misinterpret something. I don't know. I think I spent an hour on that part now. So I'm just, it's not that important why the CLI gave me a wrong signature, even though it is a bit weird and maybe I'll understand it at some point, but I want to finally continue. Finally. Wow. Wow. I, I think I've been talking like at least an hour from the point where I wanted it to just let it fail to playing with this. Yeah. So now I'm at that point where I can let it fail because uh, the CLI won't do any checks on me now. And I just submit this raw transaction because now I have a valid signature. Let's actually submit that to the cluster, which will advance my nonce. There we go. So, oh wait, I think it was not submitted because the simulation said it would fail because I don't have enough funds. That's fair, but same as in that last video where we talked about simulations, if we do decide to skip pre-flight, then we can submit a failing transaction. Solana nonce from the nonce account. For now, it's still 6MI. But if I now submit a failing transaction, even though the transaction failed, check this out, this is the transaction, and it now is on the cluster, it failed because instruction two failed and instruction two was the transfer. So I had to pay the, the transaction fee. Bob didn't get any money because that was all reverted because this instruction failed with 0x1, which is insufficient funds. But, and that is the very important thing here, the nonce account was still updated. This one should now have a different nonce. Yeah, 8g6. Can also check it here. If we check the nonce again, it's now 8g6. Even though the transaction failed, the state of the nonce account was still 
changed. And that's important. Because like this, I can be like, yeah, I would have transferred 10 sol, but I don't anymore, right? This is how I can advance the nonce with the signature that I provided like a long time ago. But see, I need to be the authority for that. And so far we've just played with a nonce where I'm the authority. Let's get back to my original question of what happens if I try to advance a nonce where I'm not the authority. So last chapter for today, and I'm just gonna work with TypeScript now because the CLI kind of pissed me off a bit, to be honest. So what about Bob is now my signer? Same nonce account, which is nonce advance. We provide the authorized pub key, the signer, which is Bob, which is pretend that Bob has the authority for that. Because I can just have Bob be the signer for that, but he's not the authority yet. But then when I change the authority to Bob, then suddenly it goes through. Ha! <laughs> That's genius. That's fucking genius. And then we'll see what happens if I try to submit that. So, unauthorized. Let's go. Block hash not found. The simulation failed with block hash not found. Probably because that's the block hash and it's not in recent block hashes. But probably just a weird error message for this guy here is not the actual authority of this advance. Therefore, it takes the normal block hashes and in the normal block hashes, well, there's nothing there. So it's just the block hash not found. And even if I skip pre-flight and be like, ah, ignore simulations, pump it out, I get a signature. But pretty sure that that signature means nothing because it's never accepted by a validator because the validators will just also say invalid block hash. And that means my nonce will stay the same. Me as Bob, without the signature of the authority, I cannot change the nonce in the nonce account. And that's important to know. That answers my question. It is such a simple answer that you could have just imagined, but I now know for sure that without the signature of the authority, you cannot just advance nonces. You cannot just get another blockage in there. You cannot just invalidate it. But here's the, the interesting thing now. If an attacker was like, well, you idiot, you signed this, but we can't do anything with that because you're not the authority. And then they give me their authority and submit that. Maybe at some later day, because right now I'm like, okay, simulation failed, whatever. I just signed something that failed, it happens sometimes, right? But hey, if the attacker now has that, that signature, they could do an attack. Wait, let's do that. Let Even without having the key pair, I just need to know who signed. I have the signature, the IL7, and I just decode it. I built a transaction as I did before, where Bob actually signed and it didn't go through because the block hash was not his. And me as the attacker, I want that one soul. And I can't sign with Bob's key pair now because I don't have the key pair anymore. But again, what I can do is just TX add signature from Bob and that would be the attack, which now wouldn't go through, obviously. For now, nothing changed, right? I just tried to resubmit the same signature. And again, that doesn't do anything because Bob still doesn't have the authority over the nonce and the authority still didn't sign that transaction. It also never will. But what the authority can do, oh shit, but maybe if it does that, it changes the, for security reasons, it probably changes the nonce. Oh, it's that attack is not that easy as I thought. But let's double check that it actually does that. What I would expect to happen if I change the authority is that also the nonce changes. Actually, that would make a lot of sense. Let's do that with the CLI actually. Authorize nonce account. It will take nonce account address and authority pub key. Nonce account address is the N and authority, we give it to Bob, give it to Bob. And then we need to sign this with our authority. Let's do it. And I'm pretty sure that this will have changed the nonce as well. It did not. Well, maybe I'm just not in the right state yet. But it did, if it would not do that, that would be really weird. 
Oh, ho, ho, found an attack. I just changed the authority. Let's check what this signature did. We called the authorized nonce. New authority is now Bob. Old authority was me, the authority. And it looks like for real, the nonce didn't change. Okay, interesting, which means my attack will actually work because I like to think like a hacker. Attack, let's go. Now that I gave him the authority, that poor little Bob, let's take his one soul. Because now that he has the authority, the block has should actually be valid because it's now a, a durable nonce transaction. And bam, same, same signature that we got like ages ago and that was invalid because invalid block hash now suddenly went through. Wow, what a nice hack. I stole one soul from Bob and he even paid for that, stupid idiot. <laughs> nice. So that's cool. So I can change the authority without the block hash changing. That's good to know. It's very good to know if you think like a hacker. Okay, I found myself a hack. All I need to do is have people sign this invalid transaction with a invalid block hash. The UI will say, oh, block hash expired. Okay, I've seen this before. Let's, let me just try it again or whatever, whatever, right? I mean, an invalid block hash is not something that gets me suspicious. But if the backend then has the signature and can then essentially do like whatever, whatever the poor Bob or victim signed earlier, thing. I'm having a few ideas here. Not like I want to actually hack people, but see, that's just one of those things where like, oh, knowing about this is probably good. Because as soon as I once signed something, even if it was with an invalid block hash and it didn't go through, it can sometime in the future be used against me. That's really bad. And it makes me happy at the same time. I don't know why. <laughs> I'm a bit, cause I'm a hacker maybe. But yeah, wow, cool. That was not at all a, a question I wanted answered. It just, I just came up with this right now when playing around with it. So yeah, that's why playing around with this stuff is so cool. It's just, you learn. Yeah, I constantly learn. This is so nice. I mean, we're three and a half hours into recording this video, but uh, I learned stuff. It needs an authority to advance the block hash Otherwise, even if the transaction would fail, you can't advance the nonce. And we also learned that we can just change the authority without the nonce changing. Because my initial idea was actually that I let the victim sign and I sign as my authority, but I don't provide my signature yet. Like I, le I let them sign first and then it will fail because not all signatures are there, but then only when I provide my signature and I have both, then I can perform the attack. There would also be a potential attack. But like this is even better if I just change the authority to them and boom, <laughs> then it suddenly works. Then I don't even need to sign it and I never need to have myself as a signer there, which makes it easier to do it with a, like a Solana Pay transaction. The difficult part here is still getting to the signature. How do I get to the signature that the client performs because I never see it on the blockchain because nothing happens on the blockchain. That signature that I was printing here. How do I get to this one? If it's my debt, then yes, easy. But if I do it with Solana Pay, then it's just in the wallet. And then the wallet will say, uh, invalid block hash. But then if you sign, then it doesn't go anywhere. And if it would go somewhere, if it would hit the network and the signature is present there, then it automatically advances the nonce. Otherwise it would not be there. So I can't do an attack where a signature that is already published somewhere can be reused. At least not one that is published on the Solana blockchain. If I could do two, and the first one, once it's signed, adds the signature as an instruction parameter to the second one, something like that, that could work. I'm having great ideas here. I am having amazing ideas for Hex, which is bad. Yeah, I did learn something about durable nonsense. Was there anything else that I wanted to talk about? Like, I still don't get why this gave me a different signature. This, this signature is not valid for this message and I don't get why it's just a weird thing by CLI I say now because I don't know better so that's something that I couldn't figure out today but I did learn a lot I guess I want to end it here ah oh, this is cool this is cool for a hacker like me and really bad for like 
an average user because I now have ideas for hacks. Again, not like I'm gonna hack people. I like the potential of having ideas for hack. I don't know why, I don't know why I'm so weird. <laughs> if somebody hacks you with durable nonsense, it was totally not me. But yeah, point is, be careful with that stuff. If you want to sign something, even if the transaction didn't go through, somebody who gets access to that signature might still do something with it. And that can come in so many like different like forms. I, I want a more aggressive background. Now I feel like I'm in space or somewhere. I don't remember what I was saying. It can be anything. What we did today was just like transfers of a fixed amount, right? Maybe you signed that transfer of 10 sol. And even if you don't even have 10 sol right now, maybe at some later point when you have 10 sol, the attacker will execute that transaction with that durable nonce because you signed that. Or they're more aggressive and they make you sign an instruction on a program and the program will take all of your sol no matter how much soul you have. And if the attacker is even more creative, then he adds more accounts to that transaction that he lets you sign and then steals all of your USDC as well or whatever, right? Or some of your NFTs or something, right? So this is kind of makes me uncomfortable what is possible with those durable nonces. But they are implemented and they are a thing. So we need to be careful. If you don't take anything away from this video, Take that one thing. There are transactions that don't expire and that might not have been executed, but that can be executed at a later time. So even though your wallet did not get drained right now after you connected to that shady website, maybe it will get drained in the future. And not just because they have your private key, maybe it was just that they have one signature for one transaction. Or maybe they created a bunch of signatures, just to be sure, right? We just create a bunch of a bunch of nonce accounts and let the user create a bunch of signatures. You can do that. So it's crazy that that exists, but it's cool that that exists because it also allows like actual real world use cases. Not only the offline signing and multi-sig wallets, but also pre-signing a lot of transactions might actually be really cool for use cases like games, I don't know, where essentially you just need to, you know, sign a bunch of transactions and then whatever happens in the game, it executes the corresponding one. So then you can have on-chain gaming, but you don't need to constantly click approve in your wallet. Something like that could be actually really cool. Like I can think of really nice use cases as well for like non-attacker things, but my brain first goes to, huh, how can we exploit that? Which is something that I trained my brain on, not so much because I want to exploit everything, but because understanding how I would exploit something helps me understand how I can keep my stuff safe, therefore also write somewhat safer programs. I can never be 100% safe, right? But like, I'm trying my best. So my brain is like, who? Possibly a tech vector here. And maybe I'm just trying to justify writing a hack now. Who knows? I do have something planned for Breakpoint and I don't want to talk about it. So until next time, be safe out there. Don't sign any stuff where you don't know what it is, especially if the first instruction is a system program advanced nonce instruction. Actually, ne never sign those. I have a recommendation for wallets out there. Give the user like a, a text, like a warning. This is a transaction with a durable nonce. I don't know if wallets do that. I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure they don't and I can only highly recommend that because if you sign a durable nonce transaction and you're not aware of that, that can have pretty severe consequences. If it doesn't go through and you're like, ah, well, it didn't go through, whatever, then still it could go through later. Anyway, wow. Okay, so that's, it is a crazy topic. It's an amazing topic. I love the topic of durable nonces and I want to learn more and more and more. But at some point you got to stop. I was recording for four hours straight now. So uh, I want to have a break. I'll give you and your brain a break as well. Go touch some grass or watch some other videos as you will, as you like, as you like. <laughs> I'm not telling you what to do, except don't sign transactions with durable nonces unless you know what it's about. And then of course you like and subscribe and I will see you next time. Till then, bye bye. Play with durable nonces. If you excuse me, I have other things to try out now. <laughs>
Yeah, no, I'm not planning anything. W what are you talking about? 